yeah, I got a phone call from a man called Francois Reni, who lives in Paris, and he listens to my shows on Radio Nova, and uh, he works for Havana Club, the rum people, and um, he was really keen for me to go to Cuba, check out the new generation of artists, um, producers, musicians, and try and do a similar type of project to the ones that I did in Brazil and in Africa, to highlight the new scene coming out of Havana. So that was something brilliant for me because I'd never had the chance to travel to Cuba before. And fortunately he was there and very quickly we got to um, hear the music that was going on in Havana, a lot of stuff going on. I had enough good stuff for us to go and record an album a few months later. That's Havana Cultura. One of the projects that really helped me um, as a sort of introduction to producing these type of things was when I worked on the new Reconsole project with Masters at Work. And so this was kind of, you know, similar, but without the DJ production side of things, which is what Louis and Kenny would have given the new Reconsole project. This was about going into Egram Studios, which is probably the legendary studio in Havana. That's where they recorded Havana, um, that's where they recorded Buena Vista Social Club. The live room is got this amazing atmosphere and magic about it. It's all wooden. It's almost like you're walking into the Vatican. That's what I was describing it as. I had an incredible band, Roberto Fonseca's band, who is like, you know, the best rhythm section. So I was lucky enough to have him. And, uh, you know, it was really a case of me having music, explaining stuff to Roberto. I was working with a guy called Vince Vela as well, who was co-producing with me. And uh, we managed to do it, you know, we did it in five days. We talk about the musicians within the project because you'd imagine that everybody would have known everybody because Havana's quite a small place, really. And especially as a lot of the musicians and artists don't get the chance to travel very often. Um, and one of the artists that <laughs> Inadvertently, I kind of hooked up to Roberto, was this singer called Danai. I met her through a group called Obsession when I was out on my second trip to Cuba and I was doing a documentary for the BBC. She happened to be there, Danai, because she used to go out with one of the members of, of Aldianos and she said to me, oh, you should listen to my music. So I got her demo kind of whilst doing an interview and listened to it that night and I was like, this is the singer we need on the project. So I said to Roberto, do you know this girl called Danai? And he was like, I'm not sure. I said, well, she's got a great voice, let's bring her in. And so he was a little bit, well, I mean, you know, it's a bit weird, I don't know about her. So there was a slight kind of, he wasn't completely confident about it because he would have imagined he knew everybody. And, but he didn't. And so she came in, she was, you know, she was to me the highlight of this project. The key thing for me with Roberto it was the fact that he joins the dots between Buena Vista Social Club and Havana Cultura. He was a member of the Buena Vista Social Club. He came in. He was, you know, a child of Ibrahim Ferrer. He has got that massive heritage flowing through his veins. But he's also got the vision and the interest in opening up and working with people like me, working with hip hop, working with electronic music. So, um, you know, he was the perfect, perfect person to represent him. Yeah, it's funny, Jay Diller, because wherever you go around the world, there's always somebody who's completely obsessed by him or who knows very much, you know, about his impact, which is huge. And so the last place I was expecting to go to to kind of get people asking me if I had any Diller unreleased tapes in my iTunes was the back streets of Cuba on my first visit. That's where I realized that there were people who were just hungry for as many beats as I could give them. And luckily I had some stuff in my computer, so it felt right to do a, a kind of Cuban respect tribute song to him. And uh, Think Twice came out well. Yeah, no, the whole thing is new Cuba sound. It's really about, there is almost too much expectation that everything should sound like Buena Vista Social Club and I think that for me it was really important to expose that there is a, a new generation of musicians. And I mean you know you go there and you listen to reggaeton all the time, you know, you, you, you hear hip-hop being you know 
spat out in corners and streets, jams late at night. It was really about trying to open the door to that music going on. In a way, what I really want to do, and I think one of the things that, uh, that Roberto wants from the tour is really for us to bring a little bit of that DJ culture into the live set. So my whole thing is really to be able to add some effects, add a few beats, just to sort of take it slightly out of its full-on acoustic attack. Yeah, well, I mean, the project that we did in Cuba, the original Havana Cultura, was a double CD. CD1 is the recordings that we did at Egram. CD2 is a compilation of tracks that I kind of listened to and enjoyed and um, was put onto. So that's kind of a compilation of the best of the last couple of years of Cuban sounds. And that was the end of the project. But then the project started doing quite well, and I started traveling. I was traveling, DJing everywhere, and giving the record out to different DJs and producers. And uh, every now and again, I'd say to one of myself, you know, you're up for doing a version of one of these tracks off my Havana album, and a lot of them just did it. And I was originally just intending them to be just DJ tools for me. But in the end, we got about 15, 16 really good remixes, including people like Carl Cox and Louis Vega and Seiji and Michelle Kleiss, Mocky, lots of really great people did stuff. So in the end, it was really working as an album. So. Um, I decided to put it out as the remix version, keep the thing going, do the live show and um, also do a mix version of that remix album. So that's all coming out and out now. Consumiendo, desapareciendo, no vas a hacer el cuento, nada.